Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, family physician. And in this video, we're gonna discuss lots of facts and tidbits of knowledge about dairy. Is dairy scary? Will it lead to inflammation and perhaps even obesity? Now, if you haven't already done so, please take one second and click the subscribe button down below this video and click the little bell right beside it and choose all so that every time I have a bright idea like this, you'll be one of the very first people to know. Now let's talk about dairy and if it's scary. I'm going to try to hit several broad concepts and topics about dairy in this video to kind of give you a broader understanding and, and, a, and a, just a, uh, an awareness of what dairy is, where it comes from, why we should or shouldn't drink or consume dairy products, and how it reflects on your health, how you can actually improve your health as soon as you're done watching this video. So stick around to the end. I think you're going to really enjoy the things we discuss. First of all, let's talk about the purpose of dairy, milk, in the mammalian species. Why do mammals make milk? Why do infant mammals drink milk? So that's the, the first concept I want you to understand. Mammals are born very early on in their development process. They're, most of us are defenseless or almost defenseless the moment we're born. And so a mother has to give her baby mammal something that's going to help it grow and gain weight and develop as quickly as is possible. That is milk. The, the one and only purpose of milk is to help a, a helpless young mammal gain weight and grow as fast as possible. So I've actually told patients in the past, if you wanna gain weight as quickly as you really can, drink lots of milk. And we'll talk about which dairy, if you're trying to gain fat, there's definitely a dairy that will help you do that. And we'll talk about that later in this video. Every mammal on this planet as an infant can use dairy, can use milk, can drink milk and, and can digest it effortlessly and use it to grow and develop very quickly. There is a window of milk uh, usability for most mammals. Most mammals, when we would consider them to be an infant mammal, they can drink as much milk as they can swallow and they can grow and develop and become stronger young mammals from that but there's a window. After a certain age, every mammal on the planet, including human beings, are not able to digest milk any longer. And it's usually the sugar in milk, and we'll talk about that more in a second. There, so yeah, even you, even, and so over half of the population of human beings on this planet, after a certain age, and that age is somewhere between two and five years of age, they lose the ability to completely digest and completely use dairy or milk without certain side effects. You may be one of these people. Some of these effects and side effects of drinking dairy past your milk ingestion window, some of these symptoms are quite obvious. You drink milk and you immediately have effects or side effects. Some of them are much more subtle and many people, even including many doctors, don't know to blame it on the dairy. And so that's why it becomes more of a complex issue of just dairy, yes or no. Next, let's talk about what's actually in milk. And uh, milk is the most common form of dairy. There are actually all three macronutrients in milk. There are carbohydrates, there is protein, and there is fat. You have all three in milk and they are blended at the perfect ratio of carbs to protein to fat to help a young mammal gain fat and gain weight as fast as is possible in nature. The carbohydrates in milk are predominantly lactose, which is a milk sugar. All milk has this. When you're a young developing mammal, you need some sugar like this. You need lactose, there's no doubt about it, but you need lactose that comes from a species specific milk. So if you're drinking your own mother's milk or the milk of another mammal that is your species, that's fine. And so many human beings cannot tolerate cow milk or even goat milk or the milk of any other mammal, but they can tolerate human milk just fine as long as they're in this window. And that's because we have an enzyme called lactase that helps us break down the lactose into galactose and glucose and then our body can use those. Now, I, it's, I have a theory that there are some of us 
after we've passed the milk ingestion window, when we're older mammals, we can't definitely can't digest the lactose and we may even have problems assimilating the galactose. The next macronutrient in milk is protein. And it's, there's actually a variety of proteins in milk. The most common two are casein and whey. You've probably heard of those two. There's actually over a hundred different proteins and amino acids in milk, but these are the two ones we talk about most often. Uh, a lot of people have the, not necessarily an allergy to the proteins in wheat, but they do react. They have an inflammatory response somewhere in their body. So for, for many people, that's in the gut. The casein or the way they have, they have a gut reaction, and then that inflammation manifests in other places in the body. For some people, and we're going to contain this to talking about just humans now, some humans, when they ingest casein or whey that has not been acted on by a microbe, they can have skin inflammation, they can have brain inflammation, they can have all kinds of different inflammation in their body that can be quite subtle and obtuse and, not, not, and seemingly not be related to the dairy, but it is in fact a dairy uh, uh, inflammation or a dairy allergy, but not necessarily to lactose. And that's why many people seemingly can drink milk just fine, but then a day or two later, they'll have a migraine or they'll have a flare up of their eczema or they'll have an irritable bowel flare, not immediately, but later, a day or two later, uh, you can have joint inflammation from the proteins in milk. Many people don't realize they have this and many doctors don't even know this is a possibility, but it is absolutely a real thing. And the final macronutrient in milk is fat. Uh, there is quite a bit of fat in whole milk, which is the milk that you would drink straight from a mam mammal. We can actually do things to dairy, whether liquid or solid forms of dairy, to make it more or less fatty. And that's actually a big deal and something that you really need to take into consideration before you consume the dairy. Most mammalian milk that we would drink consists of about 65% saturated fat, 30% monounsaturated fat, and 5% polyunsaturated fats. Now let's go through all the dairy choices that you have at your supermarket and talk about them and kind of rank them from the absolute worst to mm, the least bad or the best dairy products that you can consume. There's a wide range and you know for the last few decades, we've all been enamored with low fat or fat free. And indeed, that is the worst possible choice you can make in the grocery aisle. If you pick a skim milk product or a fat free dairy product, basically they've removed all the fat, which is the least bad of the macronutrients in there. And so all that can possibly be left is a lot of the milk sugar, the lactose and proteins. Some, and, and as I said earlier, some, some of us can seemingly digest the milk proteins without a lot of inflammation. Some of us absolutely cannot. So skim milk or fat-free is the absolute worst, whether we're talking about milk, whether we're talking about cheese, yogurt, it doesn't matter if it's skim or fat-free, then all that's left is the sugar and the protein. And so we slowly go up the milk spectrum from worst to less bad to ultimately probably good. And so 1% dairy products are, they have 1% milk and 99% sugar and proteins. And so for most of us, that's, that's not gonna be an option. And plus it tastes terrible. Next is 2% milk and then whole milk, which is the milk that would come straight from the cow or the goat or whatever mammal you happen to milk. And that's gonna be about three and a half to 4% milk fat. So that leaves 96% sugar and 96% protein left. Half and half, which you might put in your coffee, some few people drink half and half, is about 20% milk fat. So you've still got 80% left for the sugar and the protein. Then we come to heavy cream, which a lot of us in the low carb keto carnivore community love because it tastes delicious. It's 36% milk fat, and many people are under the misconception that heavy cream is all fat. Absolutely not the case. You still have 70% room left, 65-70% room left for the, the protein and the sugar. For some of us, heavy cream is a viable uh, dairy option. And so any dairy that's 36% or higher milk fat 
probably is going to do okay for most of us, at least at the beginning of our journey back to good health. Some of us, and I'm one of these included, found out that after a certain point, I actually stalled on my fat loss and I still had quite a bit of inflammation in my joints and skin and other body parts from using even 36% milk fat dairy products it still had too much of the lactose and it had too much of the potentially inflammatory proteins. Many cheeses and many yogurts and kefirs that you buy have been acted on by a microbe. And so this microbe consumed almost all, if not all of the lactose, but it also in the process, some of its uh, byproducts bent the protein molecule. And so for many of us, that makes formed dairy products like cheese, uh, yogurt, kefir, and other things like that, cream cheese, makes it less inflammatory for many of us. Some of us, that if it's a 36% or higher milk fat and it's a formed solid like a yogurt, kefir, or a cream cheese, or another hard cheese, it seems to not be very inflammatory for us at all. Some of us, however, me being included, even the higher fat dairy products that are still inflammatory enough and insulin spiking enough for me that I notice the difference and I do better when I only stick to the fattiest end of the dairy spectrum. Now, the next step up is butter. And again, many people mistakenly believe that butter is 100% milk fat and has nothing else. That is absolutely not true. Uh, the average butter that you buy in the grocery is gonna range anywhere from 70% to 82% milk fat. So there's still, there's, you know, there's sometimes it's just water left, but there's always gonna be some of the protein solids left, the casein in the whey. You just almost can't get it all out of butter just with the churning or the beating process. And so if you're under the mistaken uh, thought that butter is 100% fat and so there's no way it can be inflaming me, yet you're still having inflammatory symptoms somewhere in your body, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it might be the butter because it's not 100% milk fat. Now, the, 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 the best absolute macros you can get from dairy is ghee, G-H-E-E, -E, or some people call this clarified butter. And so you would beat or whip the dairy into butter, then you would take the butter and, and it's one more simple step to clarify it or to form it into ghee. This is 99 to 100% milk fat. You've gotten rid of definitely all the, the lactose or the milk sugar. You've also gotten rid of virtually all of the inflammatory protein that would be left in dairy. And so even if you have a, a severe milk allergy, whether it's to the casein or the whey or to the lactose, ghee is a usable dairy option for almost all of us. And as I said earlier, it's got a beautiful breakdown of fats, 65% saturated fat, which is very good for your brain, your nerves and other body parts, 30% monounsaturated fat and about 5% polyunsaturated fat. That's a great fat distribution for almost every human on the planet. So to sum up, keep in mind that when you are a small infant mammal, you can drink milk just fine, but it really needs to be species specific. If you're a human, you need to drink human milk. If you're a cow, you need to drink cow milk and so on. Uh, some of us can tolerate cow's milk or goat's milk when we're younger but almost all of us lose the ability to break down the lactose, the milk sugar in milk at some age. Now for most people on the planet, that's for me somewhere between three and six years of age, give or take, it's different for every person. But some of us, even Caucasians, notice that as we get older in our 20s, 30s, 40s or beyond, we are less and less able to tolerate liquid milk. You can get all of the nutrition that you've been told is in milk from other excellent low uh, low carbohydrate sources. You don't have to use any dairy whatsoever after you are a, a, a child mammal or older. Now, when you're an infant mammal, you need milk. There's no doubt about it. Uh, drinking even cow's milk or goat's milk is infinitely better for your baby than the crap garbage soy and corn solid formulas and infant formulas that you find on the market and toddler formulas now. They're trying to even branch out and, and say that your toddler needs formula. 
absolutely not true. Your baby needs milk of some kind, preferably human milk. Now, some of us can get by just fine on 36% milk fat or higher dairy. Some of us need it to be full fat like or 36% fat or higher and to have been acted on by a microbe to bend the pro protein molecules. So therefore to make a cheese or a yogurt or a kefir, some of us need the milk fat to be even higher, upwards of 70%, which uh, you would find in butter at 70 to 80%. That's the only dairy we can eat in any meaningful quantity without developing inflammation somewhere in our body. And some very few of, of us, probably less than 1%, need 100% milk fat in ghee or clarified butter. And that's the only place that we can rest on the dairy spectrum without risking inflammation somewhere in our body. If you know someone who suffers from migraines, from skin conditions, from psoriasis, eczema, to just itchy skin, if you know someone that suffers from any gut symptom from ulcerative colitis to Crohn's to irritable bowel, you need to share this video with them because very commonly a doctor will just attach a diagnosis to a gut symptom and say, oh, you've got Crohn's, irritable bowel, ulcerative colitis, and not really know what they're talking about. And that can absolutely be a, an allergic reaction to the protein in milk, what plus or minus a reaction to the lactose in milk. If you are not a Caucasian, then you, you already know what I'm talking about. If you're Asian or Af African in descent, and have darker colored skin, you know you can't drink dairy. You're gonna you're gonna pay in the the restroom later on for that. And that's actually we've been taught that that's a curse, but that's actually probably a blessing because there are so many other subtle inflammations that we get from dairy that you don't have to suffer from. But many Caucasians in the world think that and have been told that oh you can you can eat dairy, you can drink dairy, it's fine. Not true. All right, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.